So guys, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we are about to demonstrate the safety features on board this CRJ 900. <laughs> Not gonna happen, ladies. We would ask your uh, cooperation. Uh, Yanni Bavi is behind us now and we're headed to Glasgow to finally get some poker content out there as well because two episodes in a row it's all been chilling out and nothing else just heaps of poker coming up now so what are the next trips? Uh, well we're going to Glasgow this weekend to play Unibet UK tour mm. and then we're heading to London to play the Cash Game Festival next I, week I'm headed at least you're heading at least uh, we'll see about me my passport expires in eight days and uh, the Norwegian passport office fucked up, so I'm not gonna get a new one potentially until then. I'll call them tomorrow morning, try to have them send them to the Norwegian embassy here in Tallinn or whatever. We'll have to figure it out some way. Um, if not, I guess I'm stuck in Tallinn the rest yeah, of my life. It's definitely not your first time messing up with your passport though, is it? Like, Isn't it? Yeah, it's like I remember one trip where it's like we had to leave and two hours before you didn't have your passport. <laughs> oh fuck, yeah, I remember this. It's always the same with him. The microphone is working now. Might as well start the new episode. We're finally here in UK. One more flight and then we're in Glasgow. Heaps of poker coming up with UK tour finally here. But I still do need my bag though. Where's my fucking bag? Yeah, a couple of flight attendants. Uh, I don't know, we were suddenly surrounded by flight attendants. Yeah. And they were talking behind us. Uh, From Qatar Airways with those uh, cool hats and shit. They look so cool with those outfits. They I did. Uh, they were like, oh my god, uh, he looks like Jesus. And that's because, oh, he's called Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that's very funny. Uh, it turned out we were neighbors. She was from Latvia. So, as you know, I'm born in Estonia. Anyhow, yeah, we're in uh, Birmingham on our way to Glasgow. Maybe you already know oh, shit. shit. Uh, they lost my luggage. They decided not to put my luggage on the plane. And that's thanks to Tallinn Airport because they didn't put my luggage on the plane. Thank you. It's the third time in a row or some shit, isn't it? Yeah, man, I'm learning. I already brought my toothbrush in my backpack. So <laughs> that's sorted. GTO. Extra underwear and extra socks. Sorted. Yeah, we're gonna Airline. ask someone where we can get some GTO food around here. Airline. Maybe there's some nice, res nice restaurants close to the airport or something because we have like two hours. Our flight is delayed, so yeah. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. That's how it is. It's been exactly one year when we were last in this building. UK to Glasgow starting any minute now. So good memories from last year though. We finished third and I, I was on an epic heater that time. Like every single event I went to, I was like cashing them, final tabling, oh my fucking god. So maybe, just maybe, let's see how it turns out. What's up here Ben? What are ben. they doing? There's a flip tournament going on and the winner of the flip tournament will receive a free ticket to this <laughs> event, which is, as you call it, the main event of UK. It's the Unibet UK Tour main event. And they're in the last stages here. Oh, you have two cards then, Thomas? Uh, yeah. Two, two no, cards then, Thomas? Two cards and then two cards. Yeah, that's right. Just step, yeah. Okay. First the turn. First the turn. 9 10, cheaper. Is King Hall. Oh! 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 <laughs> That's pretty crazy. How'd you do it? You, you've definitely been practicing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Since the last time. Oh shit. This is how it's done, guys. You just need to practice, you know?
luckily luckily it's a two bullet that went so we also have a re-entry <laughs> as you can guess i just busted i got it in good so happy about that but there's been two interesting hands before one with espen was the first hand i played i had aces and we're gonna talk about it together with espen but I'll go through the other one where I'm quite sure I made a bad lay down. Obviously made a bad lay down because my willing showed me a bluff as well. But the hand went like under the gun limps. Uh, there's two more limpers, button and small blind. On the big blind we find jack 10 of diamonds. So suited hand with more than 100 bigs effective. So the big blind is, blinds are 200, 400. I think running anti 50. Uh, I make it 2.5k and uh, under the gun player calls button quickly calls and small blind falls so 8k on the flop and the flop comes king of clubs jack of clubs and deuce of diamonds or deuce of hearts i don't have a backdoor flesh draw so we have second pair and yeah that's pretty much it so i decided to go with a check i would be betting here my strongest check would be king 10 i would definitely uh, bet stronger hands so under the gun player decides to bet I, I think around 3.5k a bit more a bit less than half a pot one falls we call now pot is around 15k turn is a queen let's say queen of hearts so the board is king jack deuce and a queen still two clubs out there i check again but willem bet 6k into 15k i'm like well getting three and a half to one i have odds here with my open ender and uh like trip straw so all jacks are good potentially ace and a 10 without the club i have the odds so i call again so but it's 27k river is a free so a blank i check willem bets 11k i go into tank and what i what do i think about it in this situation i think like how many bluffs does he has yeah what limp bot so i'm quite sure he limps potentially a lot of ace x suited hand so he could have like ace4, ace5, ace6, ace7, ace9 for for busted flash draws potentially 7, 8, uh, 6, 7 suited as well so that's a lot of uh, busted flash draws right there what else, uh, where am I in my range? I, I do have king 10 here I probably have ace check here as well mm, and that's about it so I'm fairly up in my range, like somewhere in the middle. So first one, if he has a lot of bluffs, it means a sign we have to call. Check 10, we're middle-ish of our range. So we can go by call by a fault. And so given I was unsure, I decided to ask him, like, how do you feel about your hand? I was like, how do you ask? I think I asked, is your hand good? Then he looked at me, because we were really close to each other. And then I asked, do you feel good about your hand? And he went like, he nodded. So when people, like the main question is now, what is he stating right now? He's stating that he's, he's comfortable with his hand. So he's stating, he's trying to make his range stronger, which should mean most of the time, he actually is playing a weak range. And they called the clock on me, I took my time and I made a lay down, was shown a bluff, pocket sevens. And yeah, definitely was not happy about it and it was on my mind for a bit. And so the main question is, why am I falling there then? If, if I think I'm middle-ish in my range, but the read is, he has a fair bit of bluffs as well. There is no good reason. It, uh, I'm trying to guess right now, and it could potentially be something with the ego, not wanting to call down and be wrong. So let's say I call down there, and uh, Willen shows me a top pair, and I have the muck. Maybe, maybe because there's a lot of players around me, I don't want to call and be wrong. So psychologically, some issues right there. And I've noticed that when it's a multi-street hand, and I'm I'm on a river with a hand, non, non top pair hand, something that's not really easy to call. I've seen myself do that before, so definitely a mental note there. The busto hand is really simple. Uh, in a 4-bet bot we have kings and the board runs queen, queen, queen. Not a bad flop, right? I bet will and champs, I call, I'm ahead, but we still end up losing. Yeah, that's that. But just on the waiting list right now and 
hopefully we can join the boys at the table. Smile. Yo. Woo -woo. You can actually smile. Fucking smile. 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 Look at the camera. Look at me. They don't black like that. Be black like. Three, two, one, go. Boom. One more. So class Vegas, UK tour. And we managed to get through the day two. Me, Lise, Espen through the day two. But right now, we're gonna go take some time off, get the mind off the games. There's 45 players left, 21 to get paid, but we don't really wanna stress about that. So we're gonna go ahead and do the escape room, just chill out, do something new. I've done it once before, and it's fucking awesome. So let's see how it is here. So what are the feelings? Did it? I think that um, that it was it was easier than I thought it would be. Yeah. Because yeah. I thought that you know when we said 25 minutes left, I'm like, oh shit, we're in trouble now. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm surprised that it. Well, not surprised, but I, maybe it's just that you guys are all really good and we got out really quickly. But I thought it would be harder. We're all video gamers, though. Yeah. I think it helps honestly. True. And yeah. puzzle players. Yeah. yeah. Puzzle solving. Mm. Problem solving. Well, we shouldn't be too cocky. I guess we didn't break any records. So. <laughs> like, we just got out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got out. We got out with like 14 minutes to spare, and I think that's yeah, pretty good. That's like, pretty a lot good of people will get out with just like a minute, you know. Mm. Look at them being overly confident now. I was like, at some point, at first, I felt like I'm just gonna sit down here in the middle and be like, "What the fuck's going on?" <laughs> but yeah, we did it. Stoked and off to playing some cards now. For some of us. Yeah. <laughs> Salt. <Right. laughs> So let's go. You've been to a couple of uh, UK tours now and Unibet opened, yeah, right? Uh, yeah. So experienced player. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. So do you see any difference like between the level of players or is one is Unibet open more like uh, is there more tension in there? Is it more serious? How do you compare them to? Nah, it's actually quite a casual uh, atmosphere, C quite a casual environment. There's a lot of local players, there was some good chat on the tables. So you mean the um, UK tour is more casual than Unibet Open? I don't know, like the Unibet Open has a lot of like different interesting characters that kind of congregate from like all different kind of international destinations, right? Mm. So there's a lot more different like characters, different nationalities and everything. But then again, like the UK this Open... This is too loud, brother. Though. Yeah, it's too loud. Yeah. <laughs> we'll continue. <laughs> so you were saying that you think uh, there are more interesting characters at the UK tour or...? No, I mean, at the UK tour you've got all the local characters, so there's a lot of people who go to these tours, they know each other, so there's a lot of good chat on the table. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, it's quite friendly. At uh, the international, the UK, not the UK, I'm sorry, the Unibet Opens, you've got, like, the international characters coming from all over. Mm. And at the same time, you know, that, that, that itself, you know, brings a lot of fun to the table because there's so many different characters, so many different nationalities, cultures just coming together. Yeah, for me, it's, uh, it was fun that, because me and Espen were staying here a couple of days longer, and everyone were really ha uh, happy and ha like happy to help you out like straight away like what do you want to do you know yeah. no props so yeah. we're definitely doing golfing right that's the plan what's that we're go we're going golfing right yeah that would be fun uh, I've only been on a driving range before I haven't really golfed properly so it means uh, he has done more than I have because <laughs> okay. I, I haven't even done that. you played mini golf I guess yeah I'm the best mini golf player out sure. there sure. it would be nice to go to like some uh, big mini golf place as well like some adventure golf you know oh. where they have fucking towers you need to hit in and all this shit you know uh -huh. we're Lights blazing. serious golfers here now yeah would be fun ah, let's do it then see you at the golf course oh. So 
how do you feel about driving on these roads? I mean, look at this shit. So small. It's okay, unless we meet like buses and trailers and shit. Then it's, uh... actually it's not okay anyways. <laughs> it's, it's stressful anyways, but uh, it's extra stressful when you meet those huge ass vehicles. Beautiful scenery though. Too bad I'm too stressed to enjoy it. Espen's doing the driving here because I forgot my driver's license. I booked the... Uh, what did I book? Uh, I booked... <laughs> the car! Watch out, watch out! Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm watching out. Yeah. So I booked the rental car. Oh shit. We're gonna crash soon. Uh, Fucking hell. I can put this on. Wait, yeah, I understand. Maybe it's with a button or not? No. Yeah? Yeah. Teamwork! We got Yay. this! Yay! Okay, we got this. Ah, oh, yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> this is a of a mess. So yeah, we're coming to see a waterfall and this parking lot is so fucking busy. And Espen had to leave the car because he didn't want to do the parking. So Liz is busting it out here. here. We made it. We're somewhere in Glasgow. Let's see how it turns out. <laughs> Espen, good job parking the car, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. Huh? Actually, like fucking the minute I step out of the car like heaps of spots open up and it's super easy to park up this car. <laughs> Why have you brought us here? Because this is where Harry Potter was filmed. Woo. Yeah! Exciting times! Yeah, it's exciting times. At least for me who's watched the movies. You and Espen have watched like two of the movies. I watched all of them. <laughs> Come on, I was seated in the first row when the movie came out for, for the, the first, first episode. Yeah, 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 I'm like such a true fan. I was there yeah, before the movie fan, started. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a closer look how the train tracks look alike. Or look like whatever. <laughs> whatever! What's going on, Liz? This is the bridge from the Harry Potter movie. Whoa! No! Yeah. It's so cool, and the train just passed. Oh, wow. Truly, mine is blown. Okay, let's go home. There's many things we've learned today, but one thing is a must-have. Try to book a place to stay before 10 p.m. because right now it's a little past 9 p.m. and we've been looking for a while and it's all booked out but it's Monday so we thought like ah Monday's easy let's just hit the road let's get the car and there was a lot of mess with the rental car as well and we've been on the road and the scenery it's definitely amazing so the wait for the car was completely worth it and I think Espen finally just right now finally found a place to get stay for car. us oh he said get in the car so this is how it is anyway it seems uh, we're our way from home and yeah back on the road All right, kids. Love calling you kids for some reason, but more, more likely you're older than me. Have some respect. Okay. Dear Hello, view dear viewers. Pleasure to be here with you. Like, uh, this is what Eurovision does. I feel like we could do it. Like, uh, Espony? Uh, I, I don't think we could do it. I don't think we could do it. Alright. Okay. okay. I hate that show. Let's do uh, hand history then. I'm probably gonna use my phone just to keep track because while we play or after a hand, which is really interesting, I usually type it down. 
in my phone. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. So actually, we did the UK tour in uh, Copenhagen because our flight was delayed. So yeah, ports... last night our flight from uh, Birmingham to Copenhagen was delayed. So we missed our flight from Copenhagen to Tallinn. So now we're stuck in Copenhagen. We had to spend the night in a hotel. Now we're here. We're going back to Tallinn. Hopefully the announcements don't fuck this thing up, but yeah. here it goes anyway. No, we're good. It's been set down the tournament pretty much when it started. I walked around. I was fil filming the other uh, other players with my cam. You're more a vlogger now. Uh, I'm the only poker player. In the I run as poker. You're more of a vlogger now, right? Uh, not really a poker player anymore. No, no, no. Full-time vlogger. Definitely. So he was doing B-roll and filming tournament and shit, doing actual work for the vlog. And Good job. Yeah. And yeah. Anyway, let's get into the hand. Yeah. So, so he sits down at my table, obviously, and he says, "Okay, first hand. I guess I have to play that one." And he looks down, and uh, you race. Yeah. Uh, I was like, "Okay, first hand. You have to play." I look down. I'm like. All right, I have pocket aces. It uh, was a really good speech to give, so I'm middle position. Yeah, what a life. Yeah, <clears throat> I raise uh, 250, it's 50, 100 blinds. We're playing 50k stacked, so it means like we're 550. Yeah. So I make it 250, it's folded around to Espen, who's on the button. Did it fold around to me? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It folds around to me, uh, I look down at pocket kings. <laughs> pretty, pretty good starting hand in Texas Hold'em. So I three bet to 900, I think. Yeah, and that's correct. From 250 to 900. Oh. Uh, folds to you. You make it 2,700. That's how it is. And at this point, I'm thinking, okay, uh, this could be a leveling war. He's just fucking around. I'm thinking if he has a really strong hand here, we'll probably make it more than 3x my 3 bet. He's out of position. We're playing 500 big blinds deep. I'm thinking if you have aces, kings, queens here, you'd probably make it like 4x or something. So I'm thinking probably a range is more weighted towards... I mean, you could just use this sizing with your entire range. Mm. Um, yeah, but I was thinking it doesn't really make much sense to have this sizing. Anyways, so I'm thinking maybe you have more like Jack-10 suited, Queen-Jack suited, Ace-5 suited, stuff like that. Anyways, I don't really see uh, four betting, five betting here as being really good. Kind of defines my range too much, I think. It's here with aces, kings, and then ace five suited or something as a bluff. Mm. Ace queen maybe. Anyways, I call. I love. Uh, let's let's keep it a long one then. I love how you stated uh, the ranges as well, and uh, Espen also st stated it could be a leveling war about the sizing as well. Like, <laughs> I'm a tournament player. I didn't even think that maybe I should make it more than 3x because I didn't even figure realize that 500 we're really 500 bits deep. You know? Yeah, it's like yeah, I think like theoretically we should probably make it like fucking four and a half times or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're so deep and you're out of position, you know. For sure. Um, yeah. And to be honest, uh, me ranging Gaspin here, I thought uh, it's like it's not gonna be too out of line. Uh, especially, like, let's say he three bet, and now he called my four bet. So my, I was giving him a range, the strongest hands like queens plus. I don't, I don't, I didn't think you're gonna three bet checks. To be honest, yeah. you might do it, but I told you don't. So after he, you called my four bet, I told you have queens plus, uh, queens kings, ace king. I'm not sure how you play aces. Maybe sometimes this is well. Probably I would uh, go over the top with aces again. Mm. Probably I would trip at jacks as well as this stacked up, to be honest. We're playing... Uh, the unit at the UK tour is so that it's anti from level 1, which is really nice. Actually, I'm not sure if it was. At it least is, from yeah. level 2 it was. No, it was from level 1, because I remember we had a discussion when we started the tournament. Mm. It was a big anti then as well, 25%. Yeah, yeah, 50, yeah. 50, 100, Yeah, we're playing 50, 100, 25 anti, right? So big anti. Uh, so I'd probably 3-bet uh, jacks and maybe even 10s here, just because like if I get 4-bet, we're deep enough that I can just call, right? Mm. And those hand don't, hands don't play that well moved away. I'd rather take it heads up with those hands, right? So I'd probably 3-bet quite wide on the button with... Yeah. All right, let's uh, look at uh, the flop then. Because it was played like four or five days ago, so who, yeah. who remembers it by yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's queen seven five with two hearts. Queen of hearts, five of hearts, seven of diamonds. Yeah. Pot is fifty seven hundred. Yeah. All right. Uh, so as you know, I stated the range I gave my opponent, queen seven five. I don't see. I was even considering uh, checking to be honest for a moment, but then I was like, well. I'm gonna go for free streets here. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make much sense checking, right? No, no, no. You only lose the queens, basically. Yeah, that's it. And uh, 
Yeah, if my plan is to bet free streets. If you raise the river, it's uh, I don't. I'm not gonna give him any flopster. Uh. So yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Hero made it 3200, bit more than half the pot. I yeah. didn't want to make it too big because yeah, probably you know it's uh, bet I'll give a better place uh, for my box if I don't make it ridiculously big. But overall, I feel like it's our ranges are so narrow, so I should be betting big probably. And given we're so deep as well, probably. I'm not sure. Probably. Yep. With I think. Yeah. We're gonna check the time that we don't miss the flight. Yeah, we shouldn't miss the flight. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so he bets, I call. Uh, no other play with kings here, obviously. He could still have all of those bluffs, like ace-10 suited, ace-jack suited, ace-five suited. Uh, he could even be betting like queen-jack suited, king-queen suited for value now. I'm definitely not betting queen-jack. Uh, king-queen I would potentially bet. But mm. against your such a strong win, I think it could be better as a check as well. Yeah, And potential. no protection needed. Yeah. Okay, so turn. Uh, pot is 12k now, and turn is 8 of clubs, so... Double flush draw now, right? Uh, no, it isn't. Uh, but you stated it was double flush draw, so yeah, my yeah. note was wrong, I remember it. So it must be 8 of diamonds. Yeah, 8 case. of diamonds. So now it's 2 flush draws on board, 8 doesn't really help any range too much. Like, for sure, both of us could have like 7, 8 suited and stuff in our range here. Um, so it could help, but... In general, I think both of our ranges are mostly weighted towards like high pairs and high cards and stuff. So yeah. So yeah, I continued betting. <clears throat> uh, it turns out I didn't make a note. Uh, 6k. So I made only a half a pot. Yeah. Okay. Um, to be honest, I still would prefer a bigger sizing. Uh, right now, I think you're gonna call with your draws if you have a bigger sizing as well. Yeah, it kind of sucks to have aces here, right? Because he blocked ace queen, which is one of my uh, most likely continues at this point. Let's see what aces I had. Ace of spade, ace of diamond. So you can still have ace, king of hearts. But not the other flesh draw. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Okay, anyways, you bet half pot. Uh, pretty mandatory call for me with kings, I think. Mm -hmm. Just like I'm getting amazing odds and I'm basically kind of close to top of my range. Yeah. And then I could have queens that I slow played. Um, that I would probably play as a race in the turn though with two flush draws out there. I could have some 7 8 suited and stuff that I would go for a race. So Kings is probably my strongest call here. So, what bluffs do you give me then? You think I still have like some e6 of yeah. hearts and ace 6 of diamonds in my 4 bet bluff range there? Yeah, ace 5 of hearts, ace 5 of diamonds, ace 10 of hearts, ace 10 of diamonds, I guess. Ace jack combos, suited ace jack combos maybe. Potentially, you just call those. Three, um, I'm more likely to call and not go into a pre flop war. Yeah, because but there it is, is no real point to blow up my stack there. But it is a point in building stack in this tournament, right? This is a really soft tournament. It's a 200 pound buy in, it's a re entry. Um, but then I don't benefit by four betting, right? I just uh, feel your free bet. Because I don't think you have too many bluffs against me there. You potentially have. but. I don't think you're falling too much to my four bet as well. I have, that's, that's I have like, all the like uh, six and suited, seven eight suited, eight five suited. Oh, I got like my four bet, so I don't really benefit. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm floating the bot with my diamond, like in six and and it's not too easy to play out of position. So oh, you no mean pre-flop now? No pre-flop. If you free bet six seven suited, you're not mm -hmm. holding my four bet. So why would I four bet plus ace five diamonds? If you don't well, have that much of a ball range, if you're free betting me with a linear range with 500 picks, which means you pretty much have no balls there, right? Yeah, I guess like that's a point, but like if you do want to have bluffs there, there should be stuff like ace 5 suited and ace 10 suited and stuff. Yeah, like. theory wise. Yeah. Oh. Seems we've been going for this at this so long that my phone turned off. Anyway, we are on the river now because yeah. uh, you called my 6k pet. Yeah. But it's 24k. Still the first hand I've played so far. River is five of diamonds, so the backdoor flash got there. Uh, uh, then you notice uh, uh, wrong the other way. Uh, so yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Uh, five of clubs. Yeah, then. yeah. All right. Because both flush draws flush missed, draws and missed. the bottom paired, pair paired. Yeah, exactly. So at this point, like all draws miss. So all draws miss, and. Uh, Say that you had 7 8 suited. Fuck, we have to go over the match. Yeah. Uh, Say that you had 7 8 suited, now you got counterfeit. Doesn't really matter in this hand, but uh, it's pre it's a really good card for Kings and River, obviously. And anyway, I make this time I make bigger, I make go two thirds, so yeah. 16k into 24, because all yeah. the drills missed. And he thanks, he actually he laughed every single time before he made a call. He made like a hmm. 
Yeah, yeah I was like it. against a lot of people. I would just fold here because I don't think people do this as a bluff. But theoretically, you should be doing this as a bluff. And this guy studies poker, so he probably does sometimes. So I think like I, I just convinced myself that okay, in GTO, I just have to call, call. Uh, yeah. So it felt like a spot where I could make an exploitative fold. Though it didn't really feel like we were bluffing too much. He really wants to keep continue going with this one, but I really want to get home today. So guys. I Let's hope you, flight. yeah. Ho ho hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, we're gonna try to make more hand histories. I'm headed to Cash Game Festival uh, next week as well, so there's gonna be heaps of hand histories coming from there. And yeah, uh, this is it for this episode, right? That's it. All right. Good night. Bye bye. See you guys. Ah.